Hey, Honors Chemistry, it's Friday the 17th of April, and we're on page 539, and you're definitely going to need one of these. Got to have it out. If you don't, stop the film, go get it. I'm on page 539. The relationship between the rate of reaction and the concentration of one reactant is determined experimentally by keeping the concentration of the other reactant constant. And of course, you got to keep the temperature constant. So let's take a look at hydrogen gas reacting with nitrogen monoxide. It's a uh, nitrogen monoxide two gaseous reactants and we're getting nitrogen gas and water gas all that water vapor and uh, that has a two in front of it Okay, as you can see here, we've got four moles of gases reacting. And we've only got three moles of products. So what does that tell you? They can measure the rate of reaction of the, uh, as it precedes the equation there, the rate of the reaction based upon change in pressure. Because you got more gases going in and gases call, cause gas pressure in the uh, vessel or the container and low pressure coming out. So as they see it going to lower pressure, they can see how quickly the reaction is proceeding. So experimentation is the way they get these rate laws. So take a look on page 540. And you can see that let's suppose that um, if R represents the reaction rate, and this right here represents the molarity, The brackets represent molarity or concentration of that reactant. And so the rate of the reaction is related to the concentration of the hydrogen gas directly. Because what they say here, because of the experimentation we observed, that as the concentration was doubled, then the rate of the concentration was also doubled. But let's suppose that when the rate, the uh, concentration of the nitrogen monoxide, When it was doubled, when you got twice as much concentration of nitrogen monoxide, twice the molarity, then the rate became four times. So what is a double? What power? Would you take a double to in order to get four times the reaction rate? So what can you say that the reaction rate is related to the concentration of the NO squared. See that right there? That'd be a square. If you 
tripled the concentration, then it, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. It would be nine times the rate. And so if two, if there is a relationship like this, where it's related to that, and the reaction rate is also related to that, then mathematics says it's also related to the product of those two things. So the reaction rate is related to the concentration of H2. When you double the concentration, you double the rate. And it's related also to the concentration of NO squared. Because as you double the concentration, you're going to quadruple the rate. And if you triple the concentration, you're going to nine times the rate. Because whatever you put right here is going to be squared. Well, if you double the concentration, you get four times the rate. If you triple the concentration of that reactant, you get nine times the rate. And that's observed experimentally. So we say that the concentration of NO squared is related to the rate. So how do we make that into an equal sign? Well, that's real easy. You have a uh, constant of proportionality, and we're going to call that K. You change that fish into an equal sign by multiplying those two factors times k. k does not change, it's a constant, but it's a constant or a given temperature. If the temperature goes up, the constant's going to get bigger and the rate will go up. But the rate will go up, not because of the rate law changing. The rate law is still the green stuff here. It won't change. It's just that the constant will change and cause the rate to go up. All right. So does that make any sense at all? Look on the bottom of page 540, and you'll see that rate law for um, reactant A then reactant B. Let's just write this particular rate law as reactant A. This is the general form of the rate law. Let's go with a different color, blue. A equal K, reactant A, the nth power, reactant B, to the nth power. Now, these are called the order of the reaction with respect to reactant. So we say that the reaction is to the nth power or the nth order in A, to the nth order in B. And so what would it be for this? This is the general form, and this is specific to this equation. So what is that power? N is one. What is this power? M is two. And why don't they go M followed by N? Since they go A then B, why isn't this M and that M? I have no idea. It made me upset when I first learned that. Okay. Now, uh, so this reaction is in the nth, nth order in B. And you can see that written down there on the bottom of page 540. Now on 541, you're gonna see some reactions with nitrogen oxide uh, type materials. Nitrogen oxides, those are smog producers. So if three nitrogen monoxide gas, combines with dinitrogen monoxide gas, 
you're going to get. Oh, no, no, this is just the decomposition of this stuff. It's decomposing into that. And nitrogen dioxide. All those oxides of nitrogen, three different ones. And so they say the rate equation based upon experimentation now, the rate is K and O2 squared. Rate law is K concentration of NO2 squared. Now, why is NO2 the only thing in the rate law? It's because there's only it's NO. What was I thinking? Of? There's only one reactant. But if there's multiple reactants, like the next one, NO2 plus uh, carbon monoxide gas. Looks like these are homogeneous reactions. Yield NO plus CO2. What is the rate law that they show you there? It's going to be K. One concentration of NO2, some concentration of CO2. And by, by uh, experimentation, they were able to calculate it's NO2 squared. And so the CO2 gets a zero power, which takes it out of there because the CO2 doesn't affect the rate. The concentration of CO2 does not, you could put a whole bunch more CO2 in there, enrich it, and it would not affect the rate at which that equation drives. However, if you increase the concentration of NO2 twofold, go from uh, two mole, say three molar to six molar, then it's gonna get squared. You're gonna get four times the rate. So two squared would be four times the rate. If you triple the concentration of this, it'll be nine times the rate. Because let me go ahead and put that in there. If you triple, and then you go ahead and square the triple, don't you have to have a nine there? To Whatever you do to that concentration gets squared. Now, let's take a look here. Review. Why did that go away? Why did that react? Because it had a power of zero. It was not affecting the outcome, the concentration. This was found out by experimentation. Is this taking too long? Probably. 2NO2. Decomposes into 2NO. And O2. The reaction rate, the rate law, we call it the rate law, is K and O2 some power. By experimentation, we found it was squared. Now, here's what I want to point out to you. You see that that rate law, this coefficient, happened to be the same. Did you notice this rate law and this coefficient is not the same? It's not always going to be the same. This one and that coefficient is not the same. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not. Okay, in the middle of page 541, we see it is important to understand that the orders in the rate law may or may not match the coefficients in the balanced equation. These orders must be determined from experimental data. Okay, specific rate constant. I wanted to do some problems with you. I guess I'm just gonna have to do it on our next meeting. We'll be here in just a couple minutes. <laughs>